I recently met a young Navy lieutenant named Brad Snyder who'd been blinded by an IED explosion in Afghanistan. He said this, he said, I am not going to let my blindness build a brick wall around me. I give my eyes 100 times again to have the chance to do what I have done and what I can still do. The first nights that I woke up alone, I didn't have a nurse there watching me. I wake up, it's a difficult realization that first moment when you realize I'm blind and I can't see and I may never be able to see. You know, I look around every day and think of how many things I see that are so beautiful. I was in the other room and I heard him swear and I came back and I said, what's wrong? He goes, oh. he goes, I can't believe this. It's so horrible to be lost in your own house. When the doctors came in and told him that he was never going to be able to see again after they had uh, spent many hours in surgery trying to repair his eyes. He had a solemn sigh that lasted for about a minute and then said, all right, what can I do now? Early high school, he said, I want to go to the Naval Academy. He wasn't going to stop until he made that happen. When he got into the Naval Academy, he said, I want to go EOD. He wasn't going to stop until he made that happen. And then he got hurt, got in a hospital bed, we started talking about options, about what he could do with his future, and he said, I want to go to the Paralympics. I was smaller than everyone else. Uh, I didn't have the advantage of height or an enormous amount of talent. And through the mentorship of my father, we decided that the way that I would succeed in swimming is just by working harder than everyone else. Radley Schneider of the USA with 57-1-8, the fastest qualifier, goes in four. He wasn't doing it for himself. He was doing it to prove to his family and his friends that he was going to be OK. Schneider there saying, I can't hear you. I was four inches away from being dead. And I really wanted that story to come true. A year later, I won a gold medal. Thank you, Mark. Schneider away very, very quick. That will erase the badness of that day. From now on, we can look at that day as a great day in all of our lives. Anything he wanted to get done, he was going to get done. They're all in a line. Lane number five, Bozun Yang from China. But now the challenge from Bradley Schneider in four. Schneider's coming through for the USA. Bradley Schneider into the lead. Into the final stroke, 57-43. Schneider, he takes it. 432-41, faster than the small. It's a gold medal for him. Brad took the medal and put it on my neck and said, this was a medal that we had won together for our fight for the last year. So that was a pretty, says a lot about what that moment was to all of us. Uh, distinctly, we were having dinner one night, um, a few days after he'd returned from the Paralympics and looked up at me, looked through me and said, I want a gold medal, you know? And uh, it, was, it was an interesting moment because you could just see it settle into his face and his body, the fact that he knew that he had risen above the cards that he was dealt. Brett Snyder is inspiration, not just to the blind community, but to everyone. And that is why we named our watch the Brett. All the mainstream watches and clocks out there require vision. And checking time is still a big challenge for many people who are visually impaired because they just can't see them. Instead of designing another watch that requires either vision or sound, we wanted to develop a timepiece where you can touch time. This is a timepiece, not a watch, because you don't have to watch this to know the time. I was fiercely independent for a long time. I don't like asking for help, and so every time that I have the opportunity to find a new method or a new technique or a new technology that enables me to do something autonomously, it's very exciting to me, and I gain that autonomy back a little bit. We quickly realized that people who are sighted are also very highly interested in a timepiece that allow them the freedom to check time without having to look at it who has not found themselves in a scenario where during the classroom, the meetings, interviews, or even dinner with in-laws, they just can't look at their watches or flash their smartphone to check time. It's rude and embarrassing. The way it works is 
By touching the titanium surface, you will feel the location of two metal spheres, one indicating minute, one indicating hour. And those two spheres are connected to magnets underneath. So when you touch them, if you touch them too hard, it might move a little bit, but it will always spring back to where it should be. It might lose the magnetic connection like this. All you need is gentle shake, and it will always return to the correct time. We've worked really hard to complete the prototype. We have the manufacturer, and it is ready to go. So jump on board and be part of this revolution.